Hello everybody, my amazing artist friends. Good morning, I guess it's afternoon. Just started to rain here. Don't you just love the rain? I'm celebrating rain with cupcakes today because I love cupcakes. Hello, Miss Ruby and hello, Shannon. How are you all today? We're doing cupcakes. Cupcakes are so much fun. You know, I like cupcakes, I think. Well, I was about to say more than cake, but that's not true. I really like cake. But you know, you can always have more ratio of icing to cupcake with a cupcake. Mm, and I love me some icing. I want you to be thinking about what is your favorite flavors of cupcakes because we're going to make some all right so let's see I have got to stop saying so that is just starting to really bug me it is Thursday and it is two o'clock and we are working on watercolor cupcakes so we're going to talk about um, watercolor and some supplies and then I have some announcements at the end too. I have decided I'm going to keep doing this on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. That is for sure at 2 o'clock. Um, that's a good time. And next week is probably going to be flowers at the moment. That's the way it is said right now. Okay, so let's get started and let's figure out what we actually need. Hello, Barb. Hello, Natalie. How are you all? How are you? All right, we're doing cupcakes today. So here's what I'm gonna work on. We need to do what we need, right? All right, so let's see if Megan can focus. So let's first start with what to actually paint on. You can paint on any surface, in any paper, really. Um, I'll tell you what my favorite is, and that is actually watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is really, really sturdy. Feel that y'all hear that that's how hard it is it doesn't bend easy and um, so I love this you can buy any brand um, there are this is a 12 sheets at 140 pound really it doesn't matter what brand as long as you worry about the 140 pounds and um, I take this and actually cut this piece of paper in half to this size right here so it's half a sheet and then I actually take this half sheet and I cut it up in half and that's how I get this piece right here now one of my thoughts that I had was a lot of people, so I've been thinking about how can I reuse some of the things that I'm doing because, you know, we've by this time, we've got a zoo, we're going to have some f sweet treats, we've got all these little things. What if we took this piece of paper, this half sheet, and we folded it? Now, here's the key here. You have to be really careful. You put it, and you, you put it edge to edge, corner to corner, and you don't crease it just yet. All right, you're holding it right here and you come out and it's hard. You see how it messed that up? It takes a little bit of effort, but you start in the middle and from the middle, you then push it out. So I'm going to just do this. Now, I'll have to say, I particularly like to have something round that doesn't make any um you know a pencil wouldn't do because sometimes pencils will actually have a color on them and then i go right down it and look at this people now i have a card brilliant right brilliant so now we have these little note cards that we can have so the way i did that again was i took a piece of paper a nine by twelve and i cut it in half and then I folded that in half and that's how I have my little sheet of my note card okay so that's something that we can work on all right so that's what I actually use next let's talk about oh 
I think I want to show you what I learned too. I found some watercolor greeting cards and I'm going to start using them. They actually end up looking like this. This is an actual one of those. Now, the thing about these cards is they're already pre-scored. I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's like this groove right here. So, you know where mine gets kind of wrinkly and gross right in here? Well, that's the thing. You wouldn't have to if you bought them pre-made. So, it just automatically folds perfect for you because they've already done it. And see, much, 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 much easier to deal with. And it comes with these real pretty, there we go, real pretty envelopes that you can also use. Crease, yes, that's the word. Crease, fold, yes. <laughs> My brother is online and he is chiming in. You got to love that, don't you? All right. Sometimes words just, you know, I'm an art person. I just don't do words. So that's what I'm going to use today is actually these little watercolor cards. So I want you to know that on Tuesday we made ice cream cones and they were so much fun. And this is what they look like. You can go back in the archives to find that. Today, we're going to do our cupcakes. We got to talk about what we actually are painting with, right? All right, so this is just a simple watercolor set. There's no real special thing about the set. It's got 14 colors. It's called an Angora, and it is pretty simple. And I'm telling you, you don't have to have a fancy watercolor set in order to do this. You can use regular Crayola. Here's the difference between a kit, like you get what you pay for, all right? So if you're taking Crayola and it's cheaper, basically they've watered down the pigments and the colors. And that's really all. It's just not going to be as bright as maybe this set. Now, I want to show you a new set that I got because I want to show you all when you get a when you get your first watercolor set I suggest this to everybody okay so I'm gonna show you I got this as a present as a thank you and it was fantastic I love it and I have wanted a set of koi watercolors for forever but I wanted to show you all what it actually looks like so here I am opening it you see it's not it's about the size of my hand. It's in this plastic case. Okay, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't see that. And you open it up, and it has this white space here. Remember, I like to always mix colors, right? I mix colors on my lids, always. And that's what this is. Okay, one of the things... Can you use a canvas on watercolor? That's a good question, Marnie Jane, and I would probably say no. Uh, one of the things I would say is, is that the canvas is gonna be too rough. You could, pro you could get away with it, but I don't know if you'd like your results because it would be very, very rough. All right, so it has this little tray thing, and it has this little feet on it, so the feet sit right there beside it. And this is what my new watercolor set looks like. Okay, now, these are beautiful, aren't they? I mean, absolutely beautiful. Okay, it comes with this little pin. This little pin, when you put it together, actually looks like this. And this is really good for when you travel, so you don't have to carry water with you all the time. And basically, it comes and it looks like that, and you put water inside this right here, and that's how you use your watercolors, all right? So that's what that example looks like. But let's talk about, it also comes with this yellow sponge thing. Remember, I always say that we have to have a paper towel next to us. So, I always want you to know, so I, that's what this little paint, this little yellow thing is, is actually for that. Now, here's the thing. Each one of these colors looks, I mean, they're pretty right here, just like they are, but you don't know what they look like on paper. That's where this, that's the lesson here. The lesson is, I always, and I'll repeat, 
draw my palette when I get a palette. You don't have to necessarily draw the palette life size like this. You could just sample all of the question, all of the colors. That's really important. One of the things I want you to look at is look at this color right here. To you all, it actually looks black almost. And I mean, even to my eyes right here, but it's in the green area, okay? You see how this is done? All yellows and oranges, reds, blues, greens, and then the neutrals, all right? So the key is, is that one right there also looks black to me, but you don't know. But if you do a sample like this, you know that that one right there that looks black is actually a beautiful blue. It's a dark blue. Another thing that you find out is that that dark color was actually a dark green. So my key, my big thing to tell you all is, is always paint your palette so you know what colors. Some people go as far as keeping this with them and they put it inside like this they cut it up and they put it inside so they have a reference for their colors okay so i'm not going to use it today although i kind of really want to but i'm not going to i want to try to keep this as easy as possible for you guys so that's i just wanted to show you my new palette and tell you what i do with a new palette all right let's get to making some stuff what do you say all right, we need to, I started looking at cupcakes, all right? I want you all to start thinking right now about what my favorite, like, you could even chime in. Let's start telling me what your favorite cupcake is. So, my husband's favorite is red velvet, and then it was chocolate, and then uh, my favorite is white icing with white cake, like almost a wedding cake. Some people like vanilla with chocolate some people like just chocolate whatever let's just start thinking about it but here's the thing most of them all of them have something white on them unless you're doing just chocolate right so i want us to figure out how to paint white i forgot to talk about paint brushes this is just a simple little paint brush it is a it's called a watercolor mop and it's about a quarter inch. It's really, really soft. Okay. So, Instagram is having some issues. Stay with me. Ooh, chocolate caramel. Ooh, that's nice. We're going to do some good stuff today. Okay. So, here we are. I'm going to take my water. I always spray my watercolors, too. Okay. So, I take my watercolors and I spray them. Now, if you don't have a sprayer, what you can do is you can come over here. All right, so I'm gonna put it down right here. I'm gonna put some water on my brush. I always have water next to me and I put the paintbrush with the water on it inside the actual paint and then I wipe off my brush. Put it in the water, put it in the next paint pile. Then I put it on the uh, paper towel. Now, I do this for every single one of them. Water, paint, paper towel. Water, paint, paper towel. And I do that for every single one of them so I get them wet. If you don't get them wet, uh, this is a good reason why you have a new set. They have like this glossy look to them. And when they are glossy, it takes a whole lot more water and it's kind of hard to control. So... That's why lots of people have these little sets here and like they have holes in them and stuff like that because they're like the favorite colors. All right, so I've activated. Let's figure out how to do white. Now, every set has white. I'll be honest with you, it's completely worthless. Don't even bother, okay? Just, just don't even bother. All right, when you are dealing with white with watercolor, you're dealing with white on the actual piece of paper, all right? So, we've gotta figure out white things pick up other colors. For example, if I have this white card and I put it next to this, 
well, this is not going to turn out right. It actually has some pink in it, and it has some blue in it. I know you all probably can't see it, but just trust me, it does. <laughs> all right. So, but it's really light, right? So, one of the things that I like to do, this is our exercise, all right? We're not going straight into it. We're going to learn to paint with white. I'm going to take some water, and I'm going to take a light blue first. And I'm going to make a real light circle here. All right. There you go. Both of y'all can see that. Okay. Next, I'm going to figure out how to do some gray. How do we do gray? We did a whole thing on gray, didn't we, with our elephant. So I'm going to take some black. And I'm going to, first, I'm going to just show you what regular black looks like. That's black with not a lot of, with a whole lot of paint. All right. That's almost too dark. If I, I don't want a black cupcake. No, I don't. All right. But what if I wanted kind of a pink cupcake with a light icing? So I'm going to come in here and get some red. One of the things I'm going to do, it's going to be very similar to what I did with the black. I'm going to take my red and I'm going to put it on my lid. Okay. I'm going to do that maybe two times. Y'all see that right down there? Okay. Now, in order to make this lighter, what do we do? I want to hear a collective. We add water, water. So I'm coming in. I'm just getting some water and I'm adding to it. Now I'm being really careful because my top right here has got some black in it and I don't want to get into that. So I'm staying really close over here. And I'm adding water. Every time I'm adding water, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter and it's starting to get to be pink. So I'm going to test that. Now we know I did that like maybe four or five times. Come in here and I'm going to now do another circle. Okay. Now, just to test this, let's go add some more water to this. So I'm going to just go straight in. I'm going to add one water, two waters, three waters, four waters. So I've added four more waters. Now, let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna, so this one was only four, so this next one has eight waters. It's a little bit less than that one right there. You would keep adding water to it in order to make it lighter and lighter and lighter. All right, now I'm gonna show on this example of this white cupcake vanilla icing. Do you see how I have just a little bit of blue in there? The reason is, is that it ha it's a shadow. So we've got to pick some kind of light color to make a shadow for white icing, okay? So I want you to think about that. I picked blue here because I had a blue um, wrapper. So you could pick whatever color you want, okay? So I am now going to come back into these circles real quick. I've wiped off my brush. I've put it in the water. I've got w only water on my brush, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to go right back in there, and I'm going to see if I can't make it even more scrubby and even lighter. Let's go over here to this black one. I'm going to do the same thing. Might get to see it better with this black one. All right, you see how... It's mixing really nicely with that. I don't know if it's getting any lighter, but it is blending better, isn't it? I'm gonna come over here to this red one and I'm gonna get some more water. I've washed my brush out every single time. Now, how many of you all have ever wanted to erase in watercolor? I hear the collective, yes, it's really hard. It really depends on how hard your piece of paper is, too, all right? So one of the things is, is that you have to have a very soft brush in order to do this, and it has to be pretty clean. This is wet, right? We just did it. It has a whole lot of water in it. 
One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my, it's almost dry. I'm literally like I've, it's really dry. I'm going to come in where I had that water and I'm going to move it around and then I'm going to wipe it on my paper towel. I'm going to do it again. Do you, I don't know if you can even tell. You can only do this a few times for it to work. And do, do you see, I barely see that now. That's a whole lot lighter than it was. That's what's so cool about this, right? It suddenly looks three-dimensional. That's exactly right, Barb. Thank you. That's a good word. <laughs> Sometimes the teacher needs some help with these words. Okay, so I've filled this in with some water, right? I'm going to even come in, I'm going to clean off my brush, wipe it almost completely dry, and then I'm gonna come in here now, and I'm taking it out. That really may help us. I'm gonna do it right here with this black one. Let's see if I can. And I've pushed some water on, but it's very important that every time it's wet, I come back to my paper towel. I come back to my paper towel. You see how I'm leaving the screen every time? Now, the more I do this, the weaker the paper gets. So, yes, Ruby, I did teach you how to erase. So, I'm just coming in here. And it's just a good little trick. All right? You can't do it all the time. And it has to be wet in order to do it with a dry paintbrush. Okay, so that's what we're working on today. When we go to do a vanilla frosting... We got to think of this right here, right? So one thing that we learned was we add water to make things light, right? The other thing that we learned is that it has to be wet in order to erase with a dry paintbrush, right? Let's get to drawing. What do you say? Okay. So I'm moving everything out of the way here. I'm going to use this card here that I've got, okay? You all can use whatever you want. I am going to still try to do three, but mine are going to be a little bit smaller than what they normally are because you can see that this is smaller than that one over here. Um, okay, I'm going to start first. You're going to want, I'm going to put that so I can see it. You're gonna first want to draw really nice and light, okay? Because you're gonna want to erase things. So I'm coming in here and I'm gonna just make a line, all right? All the way across. Because my cupcakes have gotta be sitting on something. Mm-hmm. All right, next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to work on my wrappers, they have to sit on something, right? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make three lines. One, two, and three. All right, it's kind of a, looks like a street right now, right? Okay, so this is the bottom of my cupcakes. Now I'm gonna do the same a little bit higher, okay? So, I'm coming in, and I'm coming in. Notice it's not the halfway point. Like, this is half of my card right here. So, it's a little bit under that. Okay? So, I've got this one here, and I've got this one here, and I've got this one here. Now, I'm going to make... little that one I feel is a little high so I'm actually going to cut it off do you see how I made them come in at the bottom cupcakes aren't square they actually the best cupcakes have a bigger top right all right Kathleen, hi, how you doing? I'm glad that you're joining me. I know you'll do it later. You can sit here and just go, oh, I just love this. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy. All right, I'm erasing inside my cupcake right now, okay? 
I'm not erasing my horizontal line, my horizon line, okay? Now we've got to talk about our icing, the best part of a cupcake, right? Okay, you got three to pick from here. All right, now, one of the things that I did was I sat here and go, okay, this is how tall I want everything to be. So I'm coming in and I'm going to put a dot in the center of every single one of those. Okay, now I started looking up cupcakes and there's all kinds of different ways to ice cupcakes, right? There's the pretty kind that look like a uh, an ice cream cone. Then there's the kind that is very flat and people draw smiley faces on them. And then some people make little roses out of them. Whatever you want to do, I don't care. But I'm going to teach you three of these methods. Okay? I'm going to teach you the ice cream scoop right here. I'm going to teach you the ice cream. Um, it's like in a bag and it comes out all one kind of reminds me of the poop emoji. Anybody else see that too? That's okay though. And then this one here is like when I'm doing an ice cream cone and it's that soft serve stuff. So I'm going to do each one of those. So let's start over here with the ice cream scoop. It's kind of rounded. I'm going to start down here at the bottom and make these fluffy edges. Kind of like a cloud. And then I'm going to make a big old thing like that. Maybe not make the poop emoji chocolate. Now that is a very smart. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, I'll work on that. That's pretty smart. Okay. And I like to put things on these things too, right? So I've decided I'm gonna put a cherry on the top of this one. So in order to do a cherry, I'm putting a circle and then I'm gonna do a little thing like that, okay? So I'm gonna come over here to the second one. All right, here we go. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the round one. And this one is just a bunch of these cylinders. Okay. And you're going to do as many as you want. They go up. They are almost like a pyramid. It's a triangle. Just like that. Kind of looks like rocks. All right, and one of the things I'm going to put on top of this one, I think. All right, if I wanted to make this one a red velvet. Yeah, all right. We're going to work on that in a minute. If I was going to make this a red velvet, what would I put on top of it? I'm going to just put on a little heart. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the one that looks like an ice cream sundae, right? So, this one's a little bit more difficult. One, when people are doing these, this type, you always see the cupcake too. All right? It doesn't go all the way over like everything else. So, one of the things I want us to do here is I want us to leave some room. Like, that's my cupcake. All right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do very similar to what we did over here on this one with the rocks. We're gonna do it, but we're gonna only do three of them. So I'm gonna come in and it's gonna be a little bit thicker. All right, there's one. Here's two. And here's three. All right. Now, it's the key inside it, all right? The key in, inside it is that you have to make these swirls. So I want you to start at the top. You know, they always have that little Dairy Queen thing, right? And I want you to come in and make an S. C 
come in and make an S. And I've made a few S's there. Next, I'm going to come over here to this side and I'm going to make opposite. And I'm going to go like one and two and three. All right. Now, it's still looking pretty rough, isn't it? This one is going to come down this way. So I'm going to come in and I've made that across right there. And I'm going to connect the dots. And on this side, I'm going to come in and just add another few. All right. Now, when we go to actually paint this, you, we're going to have to follow those lines. All right. And those lines may really help us. So you don't want to totally get rid of them, but you don't want them to be as dark as what I have here. So now we got to work about our bottoms, right? Our wrappers. So one of the things I want us to do for every single one of these is I want us to come in and draw a little bit of a small slight C because, and we're going to mimic that same thing down here at the bottom. So I'm just rounding these corners. All right, I'm going to get rid of some stuff so y'all can see it. Okay. There you go. Now, I've got that. I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff in this one so we can see just a little bit. You see, I'm getting rid of the middle parts there. Okay. All right, and we're seeing that this is sitting on top of that. We're seeing that this is sitting on top of that. We're seeing that this is sitting on top of that. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for the drawing. Now, let's paint these things. Now, I am going to first, let's see, what are we going to do first? Let's paint the wrappers first. Let's work from the bottom to the top. I say that, but who knows, right? We all know that Megan doesn't really always do what she says she starts with. So, I'm going to just pick some colors for my wrappers. So, we're going to do this in layers, though, no matter what. So, if we're going to start at the bottom, we're going to work our way up. So, I'm going to say that this one's going to be an orange one. And I'm just going to add some orange. Now, do you all notice that I'm not going where I think that the actual inside of the cupcake is. I'm just doing that. I'm coming in and I'm gonna wipe off my brush and now I'm gonna move to this one. All right, so this one I think, because I said this was gonna be my red velvet, it's gonna be more of a, um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be goldy color. I may change this now that I see this, but stay with me. We can make it work. Can't really tell that much difference, can you? We will, though. We will. All right, and then this one, I'm going to make it blue. So I'm coming in. I've got some blue on my brush, and I'm just doing this in blue. All right. There's one, two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the color of my actual, like the cake part of the cupcake, right? Okay. So I know that this one's going to be red velvet. So we're going to wait for that. Let's see where, let's make this one the chocolate one. So I'm coming in with some dark brown. And it's going to be real simple, really slight, and I'm just kind of adding it right there. And I'm trying really hard not to touch my other color of my wrapper. All right, so that's one. Now I'm going to do red velvet. Red velvet, of course, is red, right? So I am going to do, actually, I'm going to do more of a red-brown kind of color for that. I'm going to put it right in here. 
that might need some more red, but we're, this is just the first layer, right? And then this one, what are we gonna do? How about white? How did we say that we were gonna do white? White cake actually is kind of yellow, isn't it? So I'm gonna come in the same color that I did this red velvet thing right here. I'm gonna do real light. How do we add something light? Like that's almost too much, isn't it? So I've put my color down. I'm gonna wipe off my color on my, and then what I'm gonna do is get some water on my brush and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna mess it up just a tiny bit. I'm adding to it. And do you see how that light made that lighter? Yes. Okay. I'm now moving to icing. The best part. The best part of waking up is boulders in your heart. Yeah. Nuts. Okay. So now I think I'm going to do. Well, it's a cherry, right? I think I'm going to do pink. You can make what other, every color you want. So I'm going to sit here with my pink. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add me some fun pink stuff. This is just the first layer. Don't get carried away. Don't get it been out of shape. Just put it in there. All right. My red velvet. I could do chocolate icing or I could do white icing. I'm going to choose to do white icing. So what did I tell you about the white? If this is a red velvet, I think I'm gonna do that light red color that I've been working on. So I still have some, but just to review, what I'm gonna do is get some water on my brush, come over here with my red, put it down on my palette, on the lid, get some water, bring it here, get some water, bring it here, a couple times, couple times, couple times, yeah. There we go. See how that's making it lighter and lighter? All right, so I've got that. I'm gonna take some and I'm gonna come in and I'm going to only do the edges. Just like that. Okay. That's all I'm gonna do for that first layer. That's it, okay? Then I'm gonna come over here to this one and I think I'm gonna make this chocolate icing. So the, how would we make chocolate icing? We're gonna get some brown, right? Now I want you to pay attention to all of these swirls. I'm coming in and I'm connecting them. Just like that. You see that? I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna to come to the next one. Now, you could get confused. I'll be honest with you, half the time I get confused by doing this because there's a whole lot of lines, right? You also need to be really careful that you don't have too much water on your brush, okay? So that's my first layer. You're thinking, this isn't stripes. I know, I know, I know. Just stay with me. Okay, I'm coming back. Actually, I'm gonna do my two, um, I'm gonna do my cherry next. Bringing me some red, pure red. Coming in here, adding a nice big old dot. Be careful not to get it anywhere near your icing. I'm gonna give me my red velvet heart, and I think I'm gonna make that red velvet heart. I wanna kinda of say red, but I think I'm gonna make it chocolate because it's got white icing, so I've got that brown red velvet color, kind of, and I'm just gonna add it right there. Okay, nice chocolatey. I am not gonna add anything to this one over here to the right because it's got that little Dairy Queen swishy thing, and I just love that. All right, we're starting at the bottom again. This is where we start adding layers. So, Here's what I think I'm gonna do with this one right here. I think I'm gonna change the color to this one. Leave this one, but change this one. So I think this one, for me, I'm gonna make it more, um, I think I might make it pinker or redder. Maybe we go red. 
So I'm gonna bring in some red. And what I've done, I've got some red on my brush and I'm gonna start adding stripes. And I want you to notice how they're not straight down, they're angled. So this one in the middle is straight up and down, but all of these on the side go towards that point, okay? That's uh, the second layer. I'm gonna come over here to this one. Now this one I said was more of a, you know, white one looking. And so the thing with the white one on the chocolate, you're gonna see some of the chocolates when it gets darker. So I'm coming in here with that same chocolate color that I did my um, heart with. I'm gonna do the same thing. So another way to do this is we start here in the middle with the one straight down. Now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna pick a side. I don't care which one. I always seem to do the right side better because it's my right hand and I can think that way more. And do you see how I come in and I add it. And now I come in and I try to mimic it on this side. And it's never as good on the second side, I'll be honest. Okay, it's looking like cupcakes. Okay, I'm going to my blue one. I'm gonna go straight up dark blue. I might use the same blue that I had. I'm gonna go in the straight line in the middle and now I'm gonna to try to do it on this side. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna come in and come in and come in. That's not bad. And it's just little lines all the way down. <gasps> looking good, looking good. Okay, we gotta work on icing, the best part. Icing. So I want to make this more of a purple pink so what I'm going to do, I have already done a pink, right? I'm gonna get me some, maybe some light blue on my brush. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna add it on one side and a little bit in here. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. Looks kind of funny, I'm with ya. We're gonna let it sit there though. We're just gonna let it happen. Coming over here to my red velvet here. There's not much more I'm gonna do to this side, okay? Because I think I'm gonna take a little bit of, what am I gonna take? I'm gonna take a dark brown, but I'm gonna lighten it up. I already have, so I'm gonna take this light brown, this dark brown here. And I'm gonna do what I did with the red. I've taken a little bit of it. I'm gonna make it lighter. So I come in with my water. I mean, it looks like I'm not doing anything. That's kind of the point, because I want a really light color. I don't want a big color. Another way to actually test this is to put it on your paper towel to see, okay, what color is this? Oh, that's not bad, all right? So I've got that little bitty right there, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do it just in the cracks and I'm just doing one side just in the cracks and I'm gonna leave that just the way it is all right I'm gonna come over here to my chocolate one right okay this time I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take the same color that I took and I'm gonna do the other one. And you're gonna go, this looks just the same. But I'm not getting all of them. Do you see how it's kind of darker? But not really. Stay with me. You're saying, why can't I just paint the whole thing brown? Because these edges, these white parts, is gonna be the highlight of that. And that's why we're leaving some of them. Mmm, everyone goes, aha. She knows what she's talking about. Do y'all see that I forgot about the actual cupcake? Who said that? Mm-hmm, I hear ya. Okay, so 
I'm gonna go back to this cupcake and I'm gonna make it more chocolate. So I'm gonna come in, add just a little bit more dark here. All right, I'm gonna come into this one, my red velvet. This time I might add red to it. Cause you know, I added that chocolate color. So I'm just gonna add some red right in here. Oh, this is making me hungry. And then I'm gonna come over here to this one get my little gold color out a little bit and I'm gonna just add just a tad bit right in there I'm about done with the inside of the cupcake okay I'm gonna come back to this dude right here I'm not gonna touch the bottoms of these yet mine's still a little wet at the bottom and honestly I kind of still feel like they're pretty good so we got to do some shading though and I want you to look at the shading of this one right here one side has got a darker color on it and the bottom of these fluffy clouds is always here all right so what we're gonna do is we've got to find a darker color with this i think i'm gonna add more pink too i want some more pink i'm gonna go get more pink i'm gonna get more pink i'm gonna add it in here and i'm gonna be okay if these two mix and now I'm getting that fun purple color that I wanted to begin with. Do you see how I'm not painting the whole place? I'm just painting some parts of it. Now, what did we learn about these circles and erasing? I'm gonna erase a little bit in this one. So I'm gonna clean out my brush completely. I'm gonna get my paper towel and dry it completely off. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pick a side and I'm gonna just take that off right there. I'm gonna do another one down here. That's all I'm gonna do. Nice! All right, what am I thinking about this red velvet? You know what I'm thinking about this red velvet? I think it needs sprinkles. Who wants sprinkles? Uh, yeah. All right, before I do sprinkles though, I've got to decide, is there anything else I wanna to do to this? Does it need any more shading? Do I like it just the way it is? And honestly, I do kinda of like it the way it is. So I think I'm gonna just leave it the way it is. I'm gonna come back over here to my chocolate one and go, okay, what do I wanna do with it? I think I wanna add another chocolate layer to it. So I'm gonna get some chocolate, which is my brown again and I'm gonna come in and I'm probably gonna go back over one of the things that I had already done and sometimes I'm gonna get into that white area and that's gonna be okay because it's just art therapy right yeah and that's all I'm gonna do in there that's looking pretty good and chocolatey to me yes it is all right let's add some sprinkles that's what I'm talking about I think this bothers me this one down here bothers me he's just a little bit I mean right everybody wants sprinkles I'm gonna make this a little bit darker so I'm gonna come in with my and I'm just gonna add a few more to that you don't need to if you don't want to all right I'm gonna draw my uh, whatever I want this to sit on so I think I'm going to have this sit on, I think I'm going to sit it on, ooh, what, green. I'm going to have a green tablecloth down here. It's maybe not the most appetizing thing, green with food, I don't know. But I needed some bright colors. Uh-oh, did y'all see that? Bleeding, 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 mayday. So all you do when it's bleeding like that, you either come in and you start moving it around or you leave it alone until it's dry. But the more you mess with it, the bigger the bleeding continues. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I, most of the time I do everything with this brush, right? But it sparkles and it sprinkles. So I'm gonna use my baby brush. Look at this little baby brush. Do y'all see how little this baby brush is? 
I mean, it is smaller than my pinky. This is called a 10 over zero, and it's called a Princeton Select Short Liner, okay? I buy these, like 12 of them at the same time, because I like the little tips of them. And when I'm doing dog portraits and stuff, I like to have them very easy. So I'm gonna start with my sprinkles on my red velvet. So I want red sprinkles, of course, right? So I'm gonna come in with my red and I'm going to come in and I'm gonna just put it, my sprinkles on the top because when you do red velvet, when you do sprinkles, it always ends up on the top of these things, right? And then the bottom of them don't always have sprinkles. Now, if it's wet, some of these are gonna bleed. That's all right. We're not going for perfection here. Do y'all see how I'm also coming out of the little lines a little bit? And I'm kind of coming in. All right, I've got me some sprinkles. Look at those, oh, those look fun. Okay, so now what I think I'm gonna do is I think I want some, is this wet? This one's still wet on mine, so I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna come check out a poop, em a poop emoji, my chocolate emoji my chocolate over here. I'm gonna add some, I don't know if I'm gonna add any, I think I'm just gonna add confetti now. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take my little orange and I'm gonna randomly put my dots. Okay, now let's talk about what random is. I don't want y'all to come in here and go one, two, Three, four, five. Mm -mm. This is random. So random is one and then move to the side. Move to the left, move to the right, move to the right, then go back up and do it odd. Also, I've got my little baby brush right now, right? I may come in and I may get a different size brush. So it even looks Hunter. It has a little bit more variety in it, right? Sparkles and sprinkles have sometimes different shapes. So that's my first one. I'm going to come in and I'm going to make some, let's see, I'm looking at blue. I'm going to take me some blue sparkles and I'm going to come in and I'm adding some of that. Now, who is thinking, well, we haven't painted the cherry stem, which we should do. We're almost finished, people. And, and you're like, well, what about the, I'm getting into this one. What can I say? I just love all the little things. Okay. So... I think I am going to make, let's see if I can get this to work over here. Nope, see, it's still too wet, so we're not gonna worry about it. I am gonna make a stem on that char cherry with this little baby brush. So I've got some brown on there and I'm just gonna go whoop, just like that. Another thing on cherries is that you kinda need to make one side darker than the other. So I'm taking some brown and I'm adding it just down here to the side. Now remember how I said we should highlight stuff so I've dried my brush. And you see how I just took that little bitty off right there. Okay, not bad. I think, I'm playing now people. I know it's hard to keep up with me, right? When I get on a zone like this, you know, who knows what's happening. I'm going to add some orange to this right down the middle. I'm going to add a more of that goldy color down this. Okay. And this blue one, I'm going to add 
a different color blue. All right. I am gonna come in and add a little bit darker green to the top of this right here. Just a little, not much. Okay, now I think I'm gonna hit this with a dryer. You know, you all don't have a dryer, but I do. So this is a heated tool by Ranger. It's like a little hair dryer. It's really kind of quiet compared to a hair dryer. That's why I like to use it. But it's really, really hot. So if you're a kiddo, be careful. Also, when you go to dry anything, it shouldn't take forever. Okay? Like this should be it. And I should be almost dry. Especially with that tool. Alright. Now, my favorite, favorite part is the black part, right? Is the pen. So, this is called a Uniball Signo pen, 207 Bold. It's my favorite pen. I buy them in bulk. I could do a commercial on them now. And I like to do this. So, here's the thing. I don't sit here really soft and do this really slow. I do this really fast. I want y'all to watch how fast I do this because... I also do it kind of messy, don't I? All right, one of the reasons I'm messy is, is I'm doing it on purpose and that actually makes it look like I did it on purpose if I'm fast and I do it sketchy like this. I'm doing, all, doing several little lines down this way. Yeah, y'all see that? I'm making sure I don't draw all of the little clumps here for the uh, ice cream scoop. I'm going to start here with my heart, my chocolate heart, and I'm just going to come in and I think I am only going to do, see, just like that. I don't think I'm going to go crazy with it. And I'm going to go just a few of those lines. Now, you know, one of the things I've looked at is that sometimes these have like little dots in them, you know, where it's not, you know, when it's baking, it has like pores and stuff. So I'm going to put little dots right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to come over here to this one and watch how I do. Same thing, but do you see how it's more curly cueing? Maybe. I'm going to come in here to the middle and do a few, and that is it. All right, I'm going to make sure that you see that that's the cupcake there. Then I'm going to do the wrapper that, you know, never, ever, ever comes up right, right? You always have to fight the wrapper. And I'm going to add my bottom just like that. One of the things I think I like a lot about this right here is that I'm going to add these little streaks right here. Okay, and I will say this, my Instagram saying it's cutting me off. So if you don't get all of it, I think that's pretty much all I wanna do though. All right, and then always sign your work. I'll be back on Tuesday of next week, I think we're going to do flowers, and um, I'm just adding a few little spots here. I think I like big, chunky things over here on, um, what do you call that? My confetti. Yeah, you see when you add big ones, how bold it looks? It kind of takes away from it, too, though. It's really what you want. All right, so... I wanted to say I'll see you all next week. I hope you have a good rest of the week and stay safe. I'll see you next Tuesday. And I can't wait to eat these. I can't.
you know, another thing, if y'all have any questions, I'll stay on just a little bit longer, but until it cuts me off. But I want you to know that I also have these sets. I have some sets. I know that some of you are not local, but for all of you local people, the Basement Marketplace is selling. I have a whole kit of this. And it's a 3D kit, and it has all that you need on it. They might ship it. I'm not sure. We'd have to ask. Okay, guys, have a great day.